uh, Ed and Mary with us this morning. Uh, <clears throat> this Labor Day weekend, I was saying, I think after Labor Day, you're not supposed to wear white, right? Somehow. Supposedly, but yeah, white tennis shoes. Fashionista stuff going yeah. on, so I figured I better wear it one more time. Really? Couldn't find my white pants, or I was just going to go all out, but <laughs> wear white golf shoes in here. It would have been like, it would have been, what in the world? I, I could think of a televangelist that usually dressed all in white, but we won't mention no names. <laughs> <clears throat> but anyways, the old saying up here, who cares? Y'all ever heard that saying, who cares? Who really cares, you know, or I don't care. Lots of times people like to use that comment when they are mad, frustrated, feeling angry, or they're just in defense. It's usually, well, who cares? You know, it's just a, a comeback. I remember as a kid one time, like I said, there was eight of us grand boys, and we was all around the pond, <clears throat> out behind uh, my mom's and, and my grandpa's house. And we're all out there, everybody's flying kites. Boy, it's a good wind today, and we're flying kites, and they're just going everywhere. And I was trying to let out more stream. I was a little kid now. I, was, I mean, a little kid. I'm 16, we're going down here. I was a little kid, and then I said, I pull a string out, pull a string out. And next thing you know, I pull a string out and let go to grab more. Well, that was it. My kite just, it just goes sailing off through the air. And I'm like, you know what? And I started looking and looking, and and I don't even remember who it was. And it's a good thing, too. But I don't even remember who it was. But somebody came up and said, Why in the world did you let your kite go? Why did you let it go you know, fly through the air? And I'm like, I don't know. I just wanted it to be free, you know. But who cares? And, and I was going to think of letting it be free? A kite? Yeah, this is an inanimate object here. But, but, you know, it was just something to say at the time. Who cares? Folks, we need to care. Plain and simple. And we need to figure out in life, what we need to care about, because there are some things that, you know, of course, as our, we mature, and as things change, so does the, the, the way we see things. Can you remember, as a kid, it was, it was who cared? You know, your mom and them wanted to eat one thing, you wanted to eat something else. You know, the food might have been important to somebody, or, or what, what it was, or your outfit, your clothes. That might have been the most in, important thing about what you was doing at the time, your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, different things in life excuse me, <clears throat> about the, what we once thought was life or death situations. Now we look back and we're like, yeah, right. That really wasn't that important for me to care that much. For me to have a fight, for me to cause a, a conflict with somebody, was that really worth all of that? Me caring that much. Now, I'll say this. Never have an argument about something, which we should never argue anyway, so let's change that. Never have a discussion with someone Unless you really care about it. Because if you don't care enough about something, then, you know, it's kind of like that don't vote, don't complain thing. If you don't care enough about something to have input and to care, <clears throat> then you shouldn't want to or care about the discussion about it anyway, so to speak. But what we've got to do is we've got to figure out the things in life that we should care about. Now, plain and simple, as Christians, the biggest thing that we should care about is our relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. How is it? Where does it stand? How do we treat it? How do we feed it? How do we make it grow? <clears throat> this is the one thing that we had better be sure enough in our life that we care about enough to make sure that we give it all that we've got. Amen. That we totally commit to this relationship, that we give it everything within us, that it doesn't matter if we run into a brick wall that, that's right ahead of us, or if we run to it and God moves it and lets us run through, we have got to commit, we have got to care enough about that relationship, folks, because you know what? That relationship that we have with Him here, the way that we live, the way that we trust, that salvation that we say, yes, God, we do believe in who you are, that's what's going to care enough and make us to go to the other side. That's what's going to take us over. That's what's going to change not only how we act here, but that's going to change our dwelling place in the hereafter. What do you and who do you care most about in life? It shouldn't be about the things of this world, but we have got to decide. You know, some folks will say this. <clears throat> oh, it didn't really matter to me. I don't really care what you do. I don't really care. You can live your way. I'm living this way. Let me tell you this. Somebody, anybody, everybody can tell you their opinion. But if it's not backed up by the word of God, Amen. folks, yeah. who cares? I'll put you that way. If God says it, that settles it. Whether we believe it or not, 
And if we don't follow this word, if we don't do what this word tells us, we aren't going to make our final destination. Y'all, <clears throat> one time we was on a plane. We was going out west. Plane was late, all these situations. We had to fly to California. They come back, back towards Nevada, I think it was. We're getting closer and closer and closer out there, and next thing you know, the captain comes on. Uh, we are running late, and there's going to be some folks that have to transfer to a different plane. So everyone that is not getting off, please stay in your seats, because the people that are getting off the transfer are going to be late. So we had to land, boys. You see, there's a few of us that got up on the plane, so we start landing and going. You know, we all get our stuff, and when we take off, flying through the airport. Why? Because we didn't want to miss our connecting flight to get to our destination. Folks, you better learn to care enough to take the precautions and you better learn to care enough to do what you have to do, rather it's run, rather it's hustle, rather it's sit down and wait, but to make sure you don't miss your connecting flight as we sung about on that good old gospel ship to make heaven your home. You better make sure that you're doing everything that you can to make that relationship firm so when that trumpet is sound or when that eastern sky is split and Jesus steps out that you can answer the call to make heaven. You better care enough. You better make sure you've got it all straight. The Bible tells us in Matthew, Jesus says, No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. you got to make up your mind. You can't split the fence. You can't straddle out. You've got to make up your mind which way you're going to go. <clears throat> the other day at work, I was having to go down to feed some of our little deers, literally little deers. And I had the bottles ready, and I, I had them going down through there, and I had the bucket of food for the other deer. And I get up to the electric fence, and I'm thinking, okay, well, I can just either move under, I can move over. No, I guess I better <clears throat> just try to take it off and do what I should do. I didn't want to take the extra few minutes or seconds, actually, to set everything down, to take that fence, to unhook it, set it over here. So what do I do? I'm trying to hold and finagle everything, grab the little electric part. I go over here to hook it on. Of course, as soon as I do, I'm grabbing it, it's hooking. And me and the bottles was getting really heated up, and we, I'm starting to shake my, okay, that's enough. <clears throat> then I read, read one of those things that one of those old cowboys wrote. It said, some people can learn by reading. Some people can learn by seeing. Some people have to get on the electric fence before they realize what it can do to us. You know, I should have took the time, took the right steps to assure that I wasn't going to get shot. I should have done everything that I should have done to make sure, knowing what that electric fence was going to do if I touched it, but I decided I would take a chance anyways. Reminds me of that story about the little Indian boy, Native, Native American boy, excuse me. He goes, he goes walking up to the mountainside, and he walks up to the top of the mountain, and he finds a snake laying there. And the snake says, please pick me up and take me back down. It's cold up here. And the little boy says, oh, no, I've heard better. My father has taught me you are a snake. A snake will bite me. And he says, no, I promise, I promise I won't bite you. Just get me down this mountain. I am too cold. And the boy tells him again, no, but you are a snake. I will not pick you up. I will not take you up. My father has taught me better. So this conversation goes on. And finally, the little boy says, okay, I will pick you up and I will take you down. So on his way down, he picks up the snake. And he takes him down to the, you know, as he gets down to the bottom of the mountain, he takes him out from inside his coat and he lays him down. And just he lays him down, the snake bites him. And the little boy says, why in the world did you bite me? You told me you weren't going to. He said, I'm a snake. That's what I do. What was you expecting? The Bible tells us you cannot serve two masters. You can't. You can't try to do one way. You can't try to please both of them. You've got to make up your mind, as Joshua said, who you're going to serve. Make up your mind. Make your decision and serve one or serve the other. But whatever you're going to, even God's or you know, God says in Revelation, I had rather you be hot. Or I'd rather you be cold. <clears throat> but if you're lukewarm, I'll just spew you out of my mouth. You're no good to me. You're no good to nobody. Folks, <clears throat> don't let Satan fool you into thinking, oh, I can just serve you for a while. I can just do, or I can straddle the fence and still, still keep my toes dipped in over here. You've got to decide 
and make that decision. Satan don't care about you. That's why he's trying to get you. That's why he's trying to bring you down. He's done nothing to preserve. He's done nothing to save. He's done nothing to lift you up. All he's done is something to tear you down. As the Bible says, he comes to, to, to steal, kill, and to destroy. But God has done everything that he put in his power to save you and to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. Amen. <clears throat> but you've got to choose. <clears throat> you have got to choose who you are going to serve. Therefore I say, <clears throat> take no thought <clears throat> for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, for your body, what you're going to put on is not life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, neither gather into the barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much more better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubic unto his stature? He's in there. Think about it, folks. Don't let your mind get on the smaller aspects of life. Don't let your mind get on who you are in this world. Don't let your mind get on what position, what status. Don't let your mind get on <clears throat> what the world thinks about you. You know, what the, you know what the world should think about you? This is what the world should think about you. There is one of those born-again Christians. I either want to hear it or I want to get as far away as I can. Because they've got something. There's something within them. There's power within them. And the light can't share with the darkness. And I just can't either communicate with them or else I'm going to have to give in. That's what the world should think about you. That's the only thing that you should care what the world thinks about you. Is are you living for God like you are supposed to? Amen. But too many of us, too many Christians in this lifetime is more worried about themselves. We've said this before. We're no longer ours. We are bought with a price. We are now God's. So what difference does it make? If we are God's, he's going to take care of us, period. You know, I used to be proud of my tall stature. Everybody's looking and knows me. Bro. When was that? You know? And there was no tall stature, you know? <laughs> I'm thinking one time I... Crested up there at 5'10". I got there. Me and my brother was talking. We had saw uh, somebody that um, we had known all of our lives. And we're thinking, wow. He's between about, about our age. Wow, look. It seems like he's starting to, to shrink. It seems like, you know, he, he's getting smaller. We get to that point in our life, I guess, where as humans we do. You know, we, we start to we just start to shrink down. It's just gravity. Gravity's strong and it just pulls us. Y'all ever notice, guys, how it just pulls our chest down to our belly, you know? And it, it's just ridiculous it's the way gravity works on us. But we become, you know, this guy, he's, he's in there with love, but everybody's like, gosh, he's shrinking, actually shrinking. Then my brother said he went to the doctor the other day and he says, yeah, he said, you know, I was thinking about that when I got on the scales and then when I got on the little thing to measure how tall I was. And they told me I was two inches shorter than what I thought. And I'm like, uh-oh, I ain't going back to my doctor then. I don't want to know that I'm not still where I'm supposed to be. <clears throat> I don't want to hear this news. But you know, that's the kind of things that people do worry about. Jesus says, who cares? Don't worry. Could you even change it if you wanted to? Could you even change your stature? Could you make yourself grow? No. So why let it bother you? God created you. Just trust in God. And it says, and why take ye thought for your raiment? Consider the leaves of the field, how they grow, how they toil, how they toil not, neither do they spin. And I say unto you that even Solomon, all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall we be not much more clothed than ye, O ye of little faith? He says, if God's going to take care of everything else that's out there, if he's taking care of the, the birds, the bugs, if he's taking care of the, the flowers of the field, boy, isn't the flower garden so pretty? I mean, you get a real, somebody's really took time on a flower garden, it's just pretty. It's something to look at. Be you a, a male or a female, everybody likes looking at the flower gardens, you know, period, because it's like, wow, look at that color. You just can't create those colors. I mean, been in printing for a long time, and I'm sitting there thinking there are some colors you can't create. Let me go ahead and take this moment right here. I had an uncle. I had, I still got an uncle. 
He lives in Florida right now. Hey, Wayne, here she shout out. He was in the printing business as well. And he and I was talking one time. If you've ever printed, there are just some colors that inks can't make. We'd have to print these things up, and, and there's only so many, so much in the color spectrum. And we were sitting there talking one time. Some colors you just can't get. Either somebody is just going to have to be happy and put, okay, that's good enough. This is the best that we can do. <clears throat> or you can just run in a circle all day long to try to get there, and it never will happen. Folks, that's how great God is. He, colored, he made such beautiful things in this life that we can't even touch. And if he cares enough about for those inanimate objects, or not even inanimate, those that are made, but those that don't have the breath of life that he gave to have fellowship with him, then how much more does he care for you? He cares, so we better care. God provides for us. He will take care of us as long as we are on this earth. He's got us in his hands. Luke 12 and 7 tells us this. But even the very hairs of your head are numbered. Fear not, therefore ye are of more value than any of the sparrows. Even the very hairs on our head are numbered. Ed, mean you don't talk about this? I ain't keep God as busy as you do. <clears throat> you don't have to keep up with those high numbers. You know? God knows everything about you. That's what he's saying. <clears throat> that's what the, the, the psalmist was saying. That's what, that's what it all comes down to. Where, where oh ye of little faith, it said. Jesus was sitting there saying, why do you, why is your faith so small? I believe it's not just, he wasn't talking about don't you believe, but our relationship is based upon that faith. So why are we lacking trust? Why do we just not trust God and just believe that he's going to take care? Job says this, does not he see my ways and count all of my steps? And then Jeremiah says, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You don't think God cares? Every step you take, God knows. God's got no name. The Bible says the, the footsteps of the righteous are ordained by God. They're set apart. He's a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. He's going to lead us. Jeremiah said, he knew me before I was even born while I was in my mother's womb. That's what Jeremiah said to God. He told him, God knows us from the creation of time to where we are. He cared enough to make us all as good looking as we are. He cared enough to make us all the way that we are. He cared enough to, <clears throat> to then send his son to die so that we can one more time have fellowship with him. God cares for us. Do we care enough for him? Don't think God doesn't know or God doesn't care just because sometimes things get a little bit rough. I just read you from Job. What did Job say though? He said, my steps are ordered. Y'all ever seen the little chart of DNA? You know, you'll see what, you know, on the news or on TV, on the internet, you'll see what DNA looks like. It looks like a whole bunch of, like, strands wrapped in it, twirls around. It's kind of like it reminds me of an old logging chain. You get a logging chain, and it's all looped together. Now, that logging chain, if y'all ever seen the way one of them chains are, are put together, the way they're tested, they're all, this, you know, the, the metal's bent, it's all bent together, and then the chain is put through a test. That's how they can tell you how much uh, that it's going to be able to, to hold and to pull. Puts on this machine, and the machine pulls up to a certain amount of foot pair and, and, uh, of pressure on it. And it's pulled, pulled. And as long as that chain doesn't break, then it says, okay, this chain is good up to, whatever, 2,000 foot pounds. It's, you know, this can hold this much. But even the biggest looking chain is only as strong as the weakest, weakest link. Plain and simple. It, it can only hold as much as the weakest link in it can hold. God knows each and everything about each one of us. That DNA ribbon that he put together in all of us, he knows what it is. He knows yours, mine. He knows everybody's. And he knows which one that we have the most trouble with. He knows which one that uh, seems to be the weakest. And he knows exactly how much that each one of us can take. Now, sometimes we think God's lost it, and he's putting more of us on us than we can take, but the Bible says that our Creator knows us, 
If God created, God loves, he knows what you can take even beyond what you do. And sometimes he'll push us or, push us or take us to that limit just so that we can be stronger, just so that we know, just so that we realize how much we truly can take. And it's because he cares for you. He cares enough to show you just how strong, just how good you are. And he cares enough to show you just how he's going to be there for you. Philippia says this, not that I speak in respect for want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therefore to be content. I know not how to be abased, I know how to be abound. I everywhere in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer a need. And then he says, I can do all things which Christ which strengthens me. He says, I have learned to just trust God and just give up and be with him. There was a, one of the kids' movies we used to watch all the time. And finally, the little boy just tells the older guy, the other guy says, just hang on, you know, we're going to do this, that, and the other. And he says, somebody else says, uh, do you realize that was going to happen? Or did you, do you know I was going to ask this of you? And the boy just says, you know what? I've known you long enough. I've been around you long enough. I just trust you and go with it. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'll just trust you. Whatever happens, happens. That needs to be the attitude we have with God. Right. Just, okay, God, whatever, whatever you say. No, this ain't even going to be believable. This ain't even humanly possible. But God, if you say it, okay, let's do it. Let's do it because I'm going to trust in you. <clears throat> you, you love me. You show me how much you care for me. Give me that same switch, that same turn, to where that I can trust and show you how much I care for you. Philippians 4 and 19 says, But God shall supply all your needs according to his riches by Christ Jesus. Don't worry about where you are at the moment. Don't worry about what you're going through. Just trust in God. He knew you in your mama's womb. If he's known you for that long, if he created you, he's got your back. He cares enough to give us not only what we need in this life, but in what we're going to need in the life to come. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Folks, that's somebody that cares. That's somebody that loves. That's somebody that's, that's going to be there for you. I'm not going to sit there and allow myself to be hurt. Of course, now I'm not putting myself on the stage here on... I couldn't be killed and come back, but I'm not going to put myself to be hurt just so I can tell you, if I do this, you're going to be able, and, and, and you know, and, and it not be true. In other words, God has told us, and Jesus has went to that cross for us, and he told us, if you will just trust in me and this act and this deed that I do, then you are going to be able to make it through. And then I'm sure he wouldn't have went there had he known it's not going to be true. I mean, I wouldn't. Would you, would you do something for somebody and you knew it wasn't going to be true? No. God cares enough, though, that he put aside the pain. He put aside the, the pressure. He put aside the having to go through what he went through. He put aside leaving heaven and coming down to this earth so that we could experience salvation, so that we could experience. That is a God that cares. That's a God that loves. That's a God that wants you to. To prosper. That's a God that wants you to make it through. That's a God that wants to take care of you because He's already done it and He wants us to love Him right back. Amen. He wants us to care for Him back. <clears throat> he tells us, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you so. I'm going away, but I'm coming to prepare a place for you. He says, I'm going away right now, but I'm just going to get this thing ready so that when I bring you back, it will be set up. I'm not going to leave you. I, I, I'm here with you, but I'm going away right now just to prepare. Don't think that God don't care for you. No matter what you're going through, he has got you in his hands. And if he cares that much for you, we should care for him. Isaiah tells us this, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. In other words, don't worry about anything. I got this. I've got this if you trust 
in me. If you care for me like I care for you. Hebrews the writer says this. Let not your conversations be without covetousness. Let your conversations be without covetousness. And be content with such things as you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. And then in Matthew, Jesus says, Lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. God cares enough to stay with you through the thick and thin. He cares enough, even though you might be thinking, My Lord, I wouldn't be in this thick and thin. God, Lord, if I wasn't living my life for you. You ever heard anybody say that? I'm telling you what, this Christian life, it just ain't worth it. I don't have to go through so much. I just, it's just painful. I watch everybody else just, then the life just, woo -hoo -hoo, it's all easy. You ever heard that old saying that, you know, if something's worth doing, it's worth doing right the first time. But the things that are worth doing ain't easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it. Right. Your Christian walk ain't guaranteed to be easy. Sometimes it ain't even guaranteed to be fun. But the reward that you're going to receive for walking, yeah. oh, it's so going to be worth it. Yeah. The reward of what you have to, as we said before, put a, do away with, uh, I can't do this, you know, all that stuff that you, quote, have to give up, that really you ain't giving up nothing, God takes the desire away and you didn't give up to begin with, it's just you no longer do it. All of that, I, what is that? I traded my sorrows for a crown. I believe was a song. Hey, I'd be willing to trade everything that I have to go through here if I can make heaven my home. I would spend my time <clears throat> going through this prison that I'm in if I could just one day be free and be free for all eternity. God tells us if we will give our heart and our life to Him, if we will care for Him like He has cared for us, if we will just give our heart and lives to Him, oh, the reward that waits for us, those streets of gold, going through those gates of pearl, living with God in heaven, being with Him for all eternity, no more sickness, no more pain, no more wheelchairs, walkers, canes, no more bed sick, no more lying there, but living with Him where God Himself Woo! is the light, living with Him in heaven for all eternity where there'll be no more heartaches, where there'll be no more sickness, where we can eat <clears throat> from the table that God has prepared for us. Oh, that's what we need to look forward to. Amen. God cared enough for us to do what it took to make it to the progress, to make it to the spot where we just got to. He provided his son as a sacrifice. All we've got to do is trust and believe and live our life for him and one day it all is going to be worth it folks yeah. he cared enough for us to make the plan do we care enough for him to follow in his footsteps to follow his call to walk in it daily and to live for him and to show him how much we care Amen. that's what it comes down to how much do we care yeah. <clears throat> we know how much God cares he can listen to what Luke says Luke says it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness all over the earth into the ninth hour. <clears throat> and a sun was darkened, <clears throat> and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. How much does Jesus care? He went to that cross for you and me. How much does Jesus care? He said, I love you with, a, uh, with three words in John 19 and 30. When he says, it is is finished that's how much Jesus cares for you this is he gave up the ghost though we love him enough to say world it is finished don't need you anymore you don't really care for me anyways it's God who I need to go to it's God who cared enough to me to supply my every need. It's God who's cared enough to not only supply for me in here, but to supply for me in heaven one day. It's God. He cares for us. Do we care for him? Stand to your feet. I heard a story one time <clears throat> told about a woman. If you want to come ahead and come to the piano. A woman who was sitting there, boy, she just stayed sad. She stayed depressed. She stayed mad. It was just eating her up. She'd come to church. She would just sit there. She just couldn't get back into one time. Boy, she was a boy, she was a church going on, and pastor calls her down to the <coughs> to the altar one one Sunday morning. And says, "Sister, what's wrong?" She says, "I just can't get over what's happened." Pastor knew what had happened. 
months and months before, her son had been robbed and killed. And even though she had once this burning desire to serve God, now this bitterness and, and the hatred had, you know, had took her over and the sorrow. And, and she sat there and he, he tries to talk to her at the altar and, and he's trying to, to minister to her. And she's just like, I just want to know where was God when that was happening? my son. Where was he when they were robbing? Where was he when they were beating him? And where they killed him? Where was God? Is that, is that a God who cares? Is that a God who loves? The Spirit talked to the pastor and gave him the word to say. The pastor tells her he was at the same place when they put my son upon that cross and they nailed those nails to his hands. He was right there looking, knowing the love and giving the grace and giving the mercy. He was right there. Yes. He cares. We might go through things. We might be going through things that we don't understand. Things are just going on way too much. We just, we just think, oh, nobody cares. God cares. Your brothers and sisters care, but even if they don't understand, God cares and understands. Do we care as much for Him? Bow your heads, Father.